Hey everybody, the Reeswirel here, and welcome back to Joe Dever's Lone Wolf. Now, I still don't know whether this will be the last session of the game, or whether there's still more. I have no idea, but I guess we'll find out. Fingers crossed there's enough content left in the game to be worth a session. But there might not be, I guess we'll see. Wait, what? Oh, that's meant to happen. Oh! Okay. Okay, you walk along a series of corridors in this area of the dungeon, taking agile steps through halls and passageways that seem remarkably well maintained for a fortress dedicated to the Darklands and supposedly, supposedly raised years ago. The rebuilding efforts ha here have not been for naught, and whatever else one might say about Warlord Gunzar, he runs his warband with brutal efficiency. This realization does little to bolster your flagging confidence. Yeah, because I lost the Summer's word. <coughs> Neither does the sound of the ceiling shifting above you. The stones creak noisily as they grind one against the other. As well... Wait, as well built as this new Vitag appears to be, the pulse of disruptive power that tore through Abysmal when he died appears to have wrought much havoc. As welcoming the idea of this place crashing down may be, having it do so while you and Leandra are still inside would be a tragic way to end your mission. Oh, for your mission to end. I always seem to mess up the order of the words. Never mind. With no hesitation, you run across the corridor before it's too late. See a sturdy iron bar in an adjacent room, and use it to prop up the ceiling. Mm, nah, be agile. Landslide incoming! Dodge! 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 Yeah! Sensing, th sensing that the ceiling is about to give way, you cast all thought of careful planning to the wind and rely solely on your speed and skill. You set off down the corridor or run, darting from side to side to avoid being struck by sections of the roof that begin to shatter and fall. Just as you make it to the far end of the corridor behind you, the ceiling collapses completely and tons of stone and mortar rain down, sealing it off. Had you been caught in the del deluge, the deluge, you would have surely been crushed flat. So you'd been known as Flat Wolf. With the most unstable part of the tower behind you, now you can proceed towards the surface again. The first floor of the Black Tower is no more hospitable than the last time you were here. Signs of the battle you fought in this chamber still remain. Deep gouges of in the stone and dark blood stains on the broken floor. But that is not all that lingers here. A large war party of enemies lies in wait for you, their eyes keen for the fight and their weapons poised to shed your blood. Although they are clearly hearing in case you attempt to escape, None of them know precisely when or if you do so, or if you will do so. You can hear them snarling and chuckling cruelly among themselves, speculating on how vulnerable you must be now that your cursed blade of the sun has been stripped from you. No one has spotted you yet, and that gives you the advantage, but it is fleeting it's a fleeting one. Already you see a Giak near the stairwell, nervously it sniffs, sniffs the air. These creatures have a keen sense of smell and you feel sure that you are about to be discovered. Oh no! Punch him! <laughs> you resort to the weapon skill discipline to offer a lethal display of your battle prowess. Yes. Charge! Hey, what? Okay, it's mash. Mashing button time! Attack, attack. I win! Even without the summer sword, you are still a formidable warrior. With weapon in hand, you rush into the fray and unleash the most fearsome display of fighting prowess you can. You perform a swift and fatal dance as you cross the room to the center of the war party, trailing ribbons of blood and gore from the foes that surround you. These enemies fail dismally to counter your unstoppable advance. You have gained initiate and momentum, a vital advantage. Is, does, is that one going to be initiative? A vital advantage that you must fight to maintain. Let the combat proceed. Da 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 Woo! Oh yeah, my TV's turned all the way down because of unepic. Unepic. Yeah, that game's like really loud. For one reason or another. I love the noise of the Bwah! Yay! Oh, really? I didn't even kill them. Yeah, I got close. I suppose. There we go. Who to kill next? Oh, well, no. Who to try kill next? He's got more health. 
Yes. Yay! I win. <gasps> He'll bleed out. That's fine. There we go. Perfect timing. Dum da da dum da 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 I'm gonna block. Yes, because oh yeah, I've got a new shield. A new shield. Oh no. Fook. Should have guessed that the dogs would, you know, take part. Oh no. Boosh. Nice. I killed him. Geek. Great. Oh, really? That's not even fully done. Fook. That stuns. And that has... Oh, right, okay. This might work. Yes! It gets stunned. Good. Because I can use this if it hits. Fingers crossed. Yep. And there we go. Right, I win. Very good. All I can do now is just wait. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I could do this. Can I, can I drink multiple? Oh no, they have like 25 seconds to cool down. Which I'd forgotten. Whatever. There we go, only has 301. Two. I can't count. And I have finally... I've got fine daggers. So maybe I can throw one. That might not kill it though. Eesh. It's hard to choose, really, man. So is. Yes. Actually, screw it, I'll do this. I don't actually see doing this as a waste anymore. Because it gives me a lot of my... Ah, oh, fuck, I should have tried to use Shield Bash. I should always use Shield Bash. No, it gives me all my endurance, which is a fucking really good thing to have. Whoosh. There. Yeah, and there we go, I got all my stuff back. End of fight. I really like that shield, and it's its sword. <laughs> that shield is awesome. Yes! I win! I keep forgetting that there's dogs, and that's the only thing we seem to be fighting. Well, not only, but we seem to be fighting them in every fight. So, yeah. What's the silver necklace? Oh, it's crap. That's a shame. Oh well. Though they outnumbered you greatly, you have slain the entire wel welcoming committee that was left for you by Warlord Gunzar. With so many soldiers having been committed to the first floor, you can only hope that the path ahead will be clear for a while. This is a tall tower, and you do not relish the thought of having to fight to the death every step of the way. But before you can move on, you see something strange lying on the ground. One of the fiends you slew was wielding a crude mace. It is little more than a wooden grip with one, of one end tied around a large jagged stone. In the torchlight of the antechamber, the stone reveals itself to be a chunk of Bronin. It appears to be a very pure sample of Bronin, the like of which you have never seen before. Its colour is rich and gleaming, its edge razor sharp even though it has not been refined or shaped in any way. You certainly have other priorities, but you paused to snatch up the chunk of pure Bronin and took it away. The enemy, the enemy has already shed the blood of many innocents over this mineral. There is no way you are going to let them keep this as a trophy of their wanton carnage. The way ahead now seems dark and strangely quiet. You have lost enough time fighting enemies and avoiding cave-ins. You need to press on without further delay. What about the Bronin, though? Fine. It's dangerous to meditate here, yes, it might be worse. Okay. That's not like it's dead. It, incredibly dangerous to meditate here, you can't do so. I'm sure that's like one thing that pops up. Yeah, I'm sure. Wah, 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 wah. Oh wait, what am I doing? There we go. Hall of Crossed Swords. Very good. Fight a time. Of course. <laughs> What's it gonna be though? Oh, dogs. Ah, oh, fuck. Dogs. No! They hurt. They do hurt. <laughs> Wait. Wait, did getting bit do something to me? That was weird. Whatever. I fucked that up really badly. 
I completely forgot what, what I had to do. <laughs> yeah, I did. Uh, I realised. But never mind. Fuck my life. Oh wait, I also dodged. Very good. Stun time! And now block time. I don't really know what the bite mark means. That I'm bleeding, I get. Oh wow, I didn't even do it. I was way too slow. I can't believe it. Oh my god. What? Raising its attack, please. Yes, it is. No, it's raising- it can dodge everything now. Fuck. There we go. Can't dodge that. Never able to dodge that for some reason. Uh, I'm gonna do this. Just to get rid of everything. That one is stunned, and I think one would do wouldn't be enough. Oh, really? <sighs> Whatever. There we go. I can't hit that one. As much as I'd like to, I can't. Because it's stunned. Not stunned. It's something. I could do this. So that then it will be stunned. And now it can't dodge everything. And it's bleeding. Lovely. There we go. Perfect. Bloody dogs. Ba ba. There we go. The spoils of war are good ones. Yes, very good ones. Well, we got hardened steel, Volco, blackberry tincture, steel, leather. We got everything. Now I forgot I have to activate this. Boom. Wait, I could meditate here. Oh no, I can't. Soon took that away. I do. As you had anticipated, all of the forces on the first floor of Atag were concentrated into that one group you encountered at the stairs. You find the next flight of steps to be devoid of guards, and you are able to quickly ascend quickly. Upon reaching the second floor, you discover a chamber that looks painfully, fa painfully familiar. This is the room in which you were battled. In which you battled Warlord Gunzar. It was here you were felled by the power of his captured Chianti amulet, and this is Chantiri, which is Dark Messiah. Um, and the summer sword was shaken loose from your hand to impale itself in the flagstone floor. Looking around with eager expe expectation, your heart races when you spot precisely what you came here to find. Striking up right in the floor where it landed, you see your golden weapon of legend. Unfortunately, you are not the only one who is here. As you feared, Gunza has sent a force to deal with the summer sword. As you watch from the shadows of the stairwell, three shapes appear in the distance and come to stand before your glowing blade. Two are clad in crimson robes. Ah, crap. You can see an unnatural light flickering eerily across their chests. They are Vordax. As terrible as they can be, the Vordax are not necessarily the worst of what await you here. The third figure is a towering behemoth. An armoured reptilian horror that stands nearby as tall and as broad as Red Fang, as did Red Fang the Gowagaz. Together these three enemies too big a th pose too big a threat to be attacked head on. Your Kai powers are great, but against enemies like these you will need to employ the kind of powerful magic that only the Summer Sword can provide. Yet to retrieve the Summer Sword, first you must get past the Vardax and their hulking Gowagaz companion. If you have to deal with them effectively, you must retrieve your mighty weapon before you engage them in combat. You need a plan, and you need it quick. Or quickly, lest you be discovered and overpowered a second time. Hmm. Very good. Uh, there. You reach for the Summer Sword, relying on your agility to evade the Galgaz's attacks. Mindful that you will need all of your speed and agility to get past these three formidable foes, you, you edge your way around the chamber until you are in good position to attempt to run at the Summer Sword. Unfortunately, your run will take you straight into the path of the Galgaz as it stalks around the Vardax. All you can do is hope that the beast reacts slowly to your move. Galgaz are extremely strong, but the bigger ones like Red Fang and the one you are facing now can be notoriously unsteady on their feet in confined areas. Your hopes bears fruit 
bear fruit when you make your move. The moment you come out of, the, of hiding, you are spotted. The Vardax, as you anticipated, moved horribly to re remove themselves from the path of the charging Gargaz. The lumbering beast moves to intercept you, but it is simply not quick or agile enough to keep you from diving between its tree trunk legs and rolling across the ground to the Somersword. The moment you grasp its hilt, the Divine Blade leaps free of the stone floor and settles comfortably in your hand. Comfortably. Yeah, finally. 